Hello once again to my Bash scripting series, and I'm so happy to have you here. In this episode, what we're going to do is take a look at scheduling jobs. You know, maybe we want a script to run at a specific time. How exactly do we go about doing that? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in this video, but not just this video, the next one as well. The concept around scheduling jobs is going to happen in two different parts. So this is part one of scheduling jobs. And the next video is going to be part two of scheduling jobs. So let's just dive right in and I'll show you all about the concepts around scheduling jobs. So let's just get started. At this point, our scripts are getting to the point where they're more complex and even do different things depending on certain criteria. But in the real world, we would want to schedule scripts to run later, so that way we could run a script overnight, for example, or maybe even over the weekend. Essentially, we want our scripts to run at a specific time, and it would be great if we didn't have to babysit it. But how exactly do we schedule a script to run later? Well, in this lesson, we're going to look at one of two ways we can utilize to actually achieve this. Specifically, we'll take a look at the at command. The at command is something that we'll need to install if we don't already have it on our system. So what I'll do is I'll minimize the text editor for now, and then I'll type which, and then at. Now in my case, I don't actually have at available. If I did, I would have seen output here, but I clearly didn't, so at is not available. I don't have that command on my system. And as an aside, we can assume that I'm actually logged into a server right now, even though I'm on my local laptop. Make sure that you are logged in to the server that actually needs to execute the command or run the script. That might go without saying, but I just wanted to point that out. Anyway, in my case, I can run sudo apt install and then at to go ahead and get at on my system. If you're using a different distribution, you might have to replace apt with a different package manager, but what I'm going to do is press enter to make sure that we have at installed and it's ready to go. So I'll press enter to accept the defaults. And it's already done. The thing is, at is a very small utility, so it shouldn't take any time at all to install in your system. And now I have it available and it's ready for use. Now that we have it installed, we can schedule a command to run later. Now the at command isn't specific to scripting. We could even have a single manual command run at a particular time as well. But at is especially useful when it comes to scripting, because like I mentioned earlier, it enables us to have a script run at a later time. So what I'm going to do now is create a quick script that's going to serve as the example for the at command, and this will actually show you exactly how to schedule a job and then see the results of it. So I'll go ahead and write out the script. I'll create a variable, I'll call it log file. And I'll set that equal to job results dot log, just like that. And then let's create an echo statement. And you know what? That's it. That's our entire script for this particular lesson. It's actually the simplest script that we've seen for quite a while now. But the thing is, we don't need a complex script in order to actually illustrate the value of the at command. We just need something to run and something that can show us that it did in fact run. We should be able to see some sort of record that something happened here. And all this is really doing is just printing this statement, the statement that you see on the last line into the job results log file. And that log file is going to be stored wherever we're running the script from. So let's go ahead and save it and let's minimize it. So what I'm going to do now is run the script manually. We just want to make sure that it actually does work, you know, before we schedule it. So I'll press enter and let's see what happens. Well, it would almost appear that nothing happened. However, we do have a job results log file right here. And if I cut out the contents of that file, then we have the verbiage that we included in our echo statement along with the date. So right here, we have a snapshot of when this script actually ran. Now, of course, the script is doing nothing useful at all. But if you consider that you can actually have a date in a log file, and you could always create the verbiage similar to how I have it here, 
That'll give you an idea from the log file that something did in fact run. You would also want to make sure that all the other commands that you have inside the script all execute something that is mapped to a log file as well. But for our example, we're just keeping it simple. So now that we actually have a script and it's ready to go, how can we actually schedule it to run in the future? Well, I've installed the at command, so that's absolutely the way to do it. So what I'm going to do is just check the time. And as you can see, it's actually 329 at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just schedule this to run at, I don't know, 331. That just gives me some time to, you know, type out the command, make sure I'm not rushing. So that way the command will actually run, assuming that this works, a couple of minutes from when I actually enter the at command. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the at command to schedule this job. We're going to wait and see if it runs. And then after that, I will actually show you how to use the at command in more detail. So first of all, what I'll do is type at, and I want this to run at 332, I think sounds about reasonable. So at military time, that'll work out as 1532. And what I want to do is execute the script that we've written. So right here is letting me know that Thursday, March 31st, which is recording time, at 1532, this script should execute. Now off camera, I went ahead and removed the log file. So there's actually no log file anymore, as you can see here. So as of 332, we should actually have a log file that's created, which will tell us and it will prove that this script indeed ran at the time that I chose. So what I'll do is just pause the recording right here and then I'll jump ahead. And as soon as the clock strikes 332, I will resume it and then we'll see whether or not our job has run. All right, so the time is now 332, as you can see here. But did the command actually run? Well, check that out. Job results, the log file is right there. So that's a great sign. And it's telling me that the script ran at the following time, which is exactly the time that I chose with the at command. Now let's go ahead and look at the at command in more detail. In order to schedule the job, this is the command that I ran right here. I first used the at command and the options that I gave it was first the time I wanted it to run today. So 1532, I didn't give it a date or anything like that. I gave it a time, so that means today. Dash F for file, I want it to run a file. And the file that I'm running in this case is a script. Now to be fair, I really should have written this as slash home slash J and then the file name. But it worked just fine, so I guess in my case it didn't really matter. And the at command is as simple as that. But how do you actually know that something is going to run? Well, what I'm going to do is schedule another job. And I'm going to schedule this one to be a bit further ahead here. So right now at 345, I'm going to run this again. I'm not actually going to let it finish though, but what I want to show you is how you can actually see which jobs you have in the queue, jobs that are going to execute in the future. And we can find that out by typing the command at queue. Basically, it's the queue of the at command, but we abbreviate it just ATQ, simple enough. So I'll press enter, and we can see that we have job number three, and that job is going to run today, March 31st at 345. Now the job ID on the left-hand side is important because if we change our minds, I don't know, maybe we entered in a typo when we set the command. I did earlier and I had to actually re-record that section. It happens. We might want to delete the job and to do so, we could run at RM and then the job number right after it. So this command right here will actually cancel the job that we've just scheduled. So if I run at Q again, there's no jobs. I've canceled the only job that I have. Basically, I removed it and now there's nothing in the queue to run later. Now, another example is I could run the at command and then I could give it yet another time. I'll just give it, I don't know, 6 p.m. I think that's fair enough. If I was to give it a command right here and be done with it, then, well, it's going to run it today at 6 o'clock, but that's not what I want in this hypothetical example. What I want to do instead is give it a date. So August 16th, that's what I'll give it. And I'll give it a year of 22, which is the same year. So this is going to run this coming summer. That's how far ahead I'm actually scheduling this job. And the rest of the command is exactly the same. As you can see here on August 16th of this year at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 
it's going to run the job that I actually scheduled, job ID number four, that's what's actually going to run. And of course, to remove it, add RM and then four, and now that job is gone. Now, of course, there's many other examples of the at command that I could give you, but I think the majority of everything that you need to know has been taught to you guys in this lesson. The at command is just one of two ways that you can actually schedule a job to run in the future. In the next lesson, we're going to explore another way, and this way is actually much more common. And I'll explain that in the next lesson, but for now, have some fun with the at command, try to schedule some jobs, and once you've had your fill of that, I will see you in the next lesson. When it comes to scheduling jobs, it's a very useful thing to do because you can have a script actually execute at a time in the future. And that's awesome. But we're not done yet. In the next episode, we're going to look at part two of scheduling jobs and I'll teach you even more about the topic. So I'll see you in that video as soon as you're ready.